Welcome to this talk. I am Vittorio Ferrari, and I'm going to present to you some recent works on vision and language that were done by my research group at Google Research. The first is connecting vision and languages with localized narratives. Language is a fundamental part of human intelligence. It manages to represent abstract concepts and is typically learned by connecting them to vision input. In order to attempt to learn this linking between vision and language, uh, computer vision researchers have first proposed the image captioning task, where an image would be connected with a single sentence describing its context. However, here this link is rather sparse and weak. So researchers have thought of grounded image captioning, where individual words in the caption are grounded by abundant boxes that are drawn on the image. However, in typical data sets, only a few of these words are grounded, and also the process is very expensive as the annotators need to go back, reread the caption, draw every single a box, think about which words should be grounded, and so on. And that is why we don't have very large scale data sets with grounded image captions. In this work, we present a new protocol, which we call localized narratives, which enables a much tighter coupling between vision and language. Um, our annotator instructions are very simple. We ask annotators to use the mouse to point at the objects they see in the scene, while at the same time using their voice to describe what they are pointing at. And speaking and pointing at the same time comes very natural to humans, and they can do this in parallel effortlessly. Also, the crucial point is because the mouse pointer and the voice are synchronized, we can recover the location of words in the description. So we ask annotators to um, focus on concrete objects that have a physical existence, to mention relationship between objects, also mention attributes, adjectives that describe qualities of the objects, and to indicate the spatial extent of an object by moving their mouse over it. So here is a concrete example of a localized narratives. In the front portion of the picture, the we can speak. see a dry and grass area red dot is the mouse pointer. with the dried twigs. And you can see there the corresponding word corresponding to where the mouse pointer is light blue jeans in a red highlight. Ash color long sleeve blend. You can see how nicely the red highlight follows uh, the mouse pointer. Thanks this for the synchronization. Woman is holding a black... This is a visualization of the whole thing where we color coded the time stamp. You can see again the synchronization between the mouse trace and the words in the caption. Um, you can see annotators mention concrete objects like jacket cloud, but also visual relationships, like here, the woman is holding the balloon. So how do we get to this nice data? The raw input as, as the speech in terms of sound and the mouse trace. We could run an automatic transcription of the speech and we get a sentence. In this case, this process is very nice because it preserves the timestamps that gives us a synchronicity, but it often has errors. So what we do, we ask an annotator to listen to their own transcript, uh, to their own voice recording and manually transcribe it. If they do that, we get a perfectly correct transcription, but we don't have the timestamp, so we cannot connect it to the mouse trace. What we do, we perform sequence to sequence alignment to match these two sources of transcript, and we get the best of both worlds. We get a perfect transcript, which also has timestamps connecting it to the mouse trace. And this um, synchronized voice, mouse trace, and textual caption is what we release as localized narratives. So localized narratives protocol has several advantages. Um, we get dense localization, so every word has a trace segment in correspondence. We get rich descriptions with objects, relations between objects, and their attributes. And because the protocol is natural to follow, um, we get uh, the advantage that we don't need to train the annotators. They can just get going from the first hour and start producing. And also, it has a safe worst case scenario. Um, the localized narrative you get may not always be very complete or very interesting, but it's rarely wrong. The annotators will talk about something they know. It's also very fast, including narration, mouse pointer, and the manual transcription. It's only about two and a half minutes per image. So it scales well. At Google, we collected this data at scale. Uh, we released data for about 849,000 localized narrative images. Uh, we annotated a large portion of open images, all of the Cocoa dataset, all of the Flickr 30K, and all of EDE 20K. 
So here is an overview of the scale and length. Um, the localized narrative captions are on average uh, three times longer than previous popular data sets such as Coco captions and um, um, visual genome and Flickr 30K with 37 words per caption, it's very rich. The only exception is the Stanford visual paragraph data set, but uh, we have 40 times more images annotated. Perhaps most importantly, localized narrative is the first work um, to provide grounding for every single word in the caption. And this grounding comes in the form of a mouse trace. Localized narratives are rather accurate. Here you can see an analysis where we took annotations for the COCO data set, and we took the mouse trace segment that corresponds to a word and associated it to uh, the nearest bounding box of the right category. And then we show uh, where the trace points land in a normalized coordinate frame of that box. And this gives you the impression that on average, most points are inside the box. That was about spatial accuracy. We also evaluated semantic accuracy. We took about 1,600 nouns and verbs, and we manually inspected them over 100 images. And we checked whether the noun and verb correspond to the content, and it is the case in 98% of the time. So here is a series of tasks that can benefit from localized narratives from this multimodal data where an image is associated to uh, audio uh, with people talking, a mouse trace, and a text transcription, all three synchronized with each other. The basic task you can think of is image captioning, which is usually done going from one image to a text. In this case, we don't use the other modalities. The localized narratives just provide more training data. However, we can make use of localized narratives unique ability to have a synchronized trace. We could use this, this trace during the training of a captioning model, in which case they provide supervision for the attention mechanism that's typical in such uh, models. Or we could use uh, the trace at test time to perform controlled image captioning. And in fact, we implemented such an application. We start from a state-of-the-art captioning model, and uh, we just train it on localized narratives data. And on this image, it produces this description. It mentions the fire hydrant, uh, but not the car in the background, not these trees here. Now, the idea is that we can retrain this model to become conditional. And that is, at test time, to inject a trace that would specify by the user which parts of the image you want described. This could be, for example, useful in the case of a person that has imperfect vision or visually impaired that would like to get a description of the region so he doesn't quite see well. So in this case, uh, you can see uh, the trace starts here in purple and ends in the red region. And in this case, the caption is much longer, describes the platform, describes also the car and the trees in the background. Interestingly, the same image with a different trace input leads to a different caption showing it's really controllable. In this case, we start from the background, we go towards the fire hydrant. And again, the caption mentions the car and the footpath and the fire hydrant. So if we go back to a list of tasks that can benefit from localized narratives, uh, we can think of classical text to image generation going from text to an image. Again, here, localized narratives could provide more data. But perhaps more interestingly, we can upgrade this text to image generation to be a text and trace to image generation. How would that look? We, in fact, implemented a prototype of this. So here, um, an annotator would take an empty canvas without pixels and wave his mouse around while talking, describing for where and which objects he likes to see. So here, for example, it does a scribble on the boot. We take this scribble, we turn it into a semantic segmentation map, very sparse one, and we feed it to the spade GAN, excellent state-of-the-art image synthesis method. In this case, given just this one trace segment, it produces a rather boring boot image. Hang on with me. Now the annotator also adds um, a water scribble, and the image gets immediately brighter, and the bot also changes model, and it already looks more like a real image. Now, let's add a person. And now the boat was initially closed. It opens up to accommodate for the person. Now we can add an umbrella, which doesn't make much sense, but it's fun. And the image gets richer and richer. In the end, if you add mountains to the background, the whole color scheme, the all photometric properties of the entire image it changes uh, because uh, the spade GAN nicely is a global model that takes it all into account. So um, back to tasks that can benefit from localized narratives, traditional speech transcription will go from audio to text, which you can do with our data. But particularly interesting now is to add also the mouse trace. And now we can do 
audio and mouse trace over an image to text. So this becomes grounded speech transcription where um, this would enable, for example, to distinguish very similarly sounding words like planets and plants that are often confused based on audio, but they can be disambiguated based on the image. There are a number of other tasks that are listed in this table uh, where depending on which uh, data of the four modalities we offer, which one you use as input, which one as output, you get another task. Some of them exist in the literature. Some of them are avenues for further research. One in particular is image retrieval from uh, localized narrative traces, which I'm going to explore in the second part of this talk. In conclusion for the first part, I have shown you localized narratives. Uh, they offer dense localization. Thanks to the simultaneous mouse and voice input, we can ground every word in the caption up to a mouse trace. Um, it offers rich descriptions of objects, relation, and attributes for the image, which are intuitive to produce for annotators, which means we can produce at scale without even needing to train them. And I try to demonstrate the annotations are useful for multiple tasks. We have seen two tasks in this part of the talk, um, a controlled captioning and um, image generation. And in the next part of the talk, I'm going to show you image retrieval. We get now to the second part where we use localized narratives for image retrieval. Early image retrieval systems specify a query simply as a list of object categories like a horse. This is pretty coarse grained. Recent work instead achieve a much more fine grain control by specifying a query as a natural language sentence. This development is also enabled by the availability of large scale image and caption datasets, which allow to set up training and test data for this task. Such type of queries largely embody the what in the image. This doesn't always work. Um, these retrieval results perfectly matches the what specified in the query, but it's not what the user had in mind. To do better, we would have to specify where in the image objects appear, but this would be very cumbersome to do with a text query. You would have to write things like the horse is on the left side of the image. And also it would be hard for the image retrieval system to digest such information. So the main contribution of this work is a new query modality where the user simultaneously specifies uh, the what by spoken natural language, while at the same time hovering the mouse over an empty canvas to specify the where. This strikes a balance between two dimensions. We get a great fine grain in the specification of the what thanks to the natural language sentence specification, but also it's easy to point to the where with the mouse. This query modality could be done fully for real with a user truly speaking while pointing on an empty canvas. But in practice, in this work, we simulate it by taking the existing localized narrative data and building image query pairs in the following way. We first strip away the image from the localized narrative, leaving the caption and the mouse trace as if it were drawn on an empty canvas. That forms the query. Then we take the image and we put it into the database as the intended target for this query. This allows us to construct training and test data for our task. Now I will outline a simple approach to improve existing models that are able to do image retrieval based just on a text query, to improve them to use the text the mouse trace query that we provide. So a modern, uh, image retrieval model typically uh, operates by image text matching. It is able to score a pair of a text query and an image in the database to see how compatible they are. Then you just run this pairwise over all the image in the database to get a rank. We extend such a model so that it can score a text and trace query versus an image in the database. In practice, our model has two towers, an image tower and a text tower. The image tower first composes the image into region proposals with faster RCNN, describes their appearance with a simple pre-trained CNN embedder, and then adds um, location encoding that specify where in the image is the region. This gives you this image region embedding tokens. On the text side, we specify the meaning of a word with a standard pre-trained word embedder like glove, and then also attach it a positional embedding specifying where in the input query sequence 
is that word. Now, for each of the two modalities separately, we pass these tokens into a transformer with self-attention, which is very important because it allows to capture contextual dependencies where every token can attend to every other token within a modality. Then we pass this input set of tokens and turn it into a fixed dimensional feature vector with a mean pooling. And finally, the fusion operation uh, compares with the dot product, the output of the image tower and text tower to produce a similarity score. We now augment, extend this base model to inject traces into the text tower with a trace box embedding. We turn the trace input into a series of trace bounding boxes and we embed them as their 2D image location as well as 1D position within the, the query text. Because the important point here is that for every little trace box, there is a direct one-to-one -one correspondence to a word in the input sequence. And this uh, 2D and 1D joint um, encoding allows to form the glue between the text tokens and the image regions. We concatenate, in fact, all these tokens, both the text tokens and the trace box tokens, and feed them all into a single joint transformer. So this is a really simple and powerful idea because now these self-attention layers in reality allow you to attend between text tokens and trace box tokens. And this really forms this strong loop um, between the text query and the locations in the image. And this whole process is crucial because it's what allows the model to understand where in the image um, the words in the query are supposed to be. We now get to the results section. We make experiments on the Flickr 30K data set with the localized narrative captions, which are longer than the original captions and also have a trace. And we measure results in recall at one, five, and 10. We experiment with just training and testing on Flickr 30K, but also with the priorly pre-trained on open images with localized narratives or conceptual captions. Conceptual captions are a, a larger number of captions and they contain more fine-grained words, but open images style of caption matches the target data set of Flickr 30K. So they're both useful. The main results are that with or without pre-training, using the trace as the query improved results substantially. 5% without pre-training, 7% with pre-training. This is because we're able to specify the where of the query. Instead, the role of pre-training, which also improved results, is to do the what better. And in conjunction, these two, what and where, are complementary and bring a big difference of about 27% on this data. We also have experiments in the paper on zero-shot testing, where we do not train on Flickr 30K. We only train on conceptual caption open images and then directly test on Flickr 30K. And here again, uh, using the trace as a query, improved results a lot by 9%. Here's quantitative results. Um, we can see on top the results of our system with the what and where, and below only with the what, only the text query. And here in this case, it gets better because uh, our system allowed to specify the exact location of the racket and the ball. Analog glossy here, our method allows to specify that the dog is in the top part of the image, um, exactly where, which leads to better retrieval. And here, even more complex, um, the, the query contains the fact that the lights are on top, that there is a man with a musical instrument on the right, and an instrument in the middle, and the location of all these objects is specified exactly in the query, and that's why the results are better. In conclusion, I presented a new query modality where you, the user can specify both the what and the where simultaneously with text and mouse trace. And I also shown a concrete instantiation with a neural network model, which allows to take trace supervision to improve image retrieval. In addition to works by my own research group, localized narratives and related ideas have been used by other groups across the world. For example, in the room across room work by another group at Google, and the user was asked to navigate a virtual environment while simultaneously describing the path he was taking. For example, he's saying, uh, standing in front of a closed door, then turn to the left, I can see two wooden steps, climb the steps and walk forward and so on. Because of the synchronization between the spoken language and the camera position, um, it is possible to associate 
a user viewpoint to every word that was described. So this was then used later in a challenge to test artificial agents to see if they are able to follow a path through the virtual environment given only a natural language description of that path. Now on for another use case, a, a group of uh, people, artist-oriented people, they have created delocalized narratives where they took the local narrative data we did and blanked out um, the entire region covered by the description by using the mouse trace and re rendering them with a thick ellipse. So this leaves you with an image where all the parts that are, are, are described are blanked out and you're left only with the background. And this creates an eerie feeling that evokes imagination. Now on to something more concretely useful for computer vision. Um, several groups have used the localized narrative data we released as pre-training data for large models um, that are then used for downstream vision and language tasks. Several groups have been uh, developing text to image generation techniques with more sophisticated models than the one I presented you today, which was more of a prototype. And uh, in one case, they also used the mouse traces provided by localized narratives to control um, the image generation. Finally, there is also work on doing image retrieval directly from the speech recordings as queries without even passing by uh, textual transcriptions. That's fine. We we'll now move on to the open images data set as a whole. It does contain localized narratives like I've shown so far, but also a number of other annotation types, including image level labels, object bonding boxes, visual relationships, instant segmentation masks. So my group has been developing and releasing periodically new versions of open images in several years, so we're very fond of it. All images are CC by Y licensed, which means you can use them for any purpose, including commercial exploitation. The images are complex and shows real scenes. On average, we annotated eight objects um, with bounding boxes per image, setting it in the same complexity bar as Coco. The dataset is very large scale. For example, we annotated almost 16 million object bounding boxes spanning 600 classes. Of particular interest for vision and language, I think, are the visual relationship annotations. Let's expand on that. We have relationships involving two objects, with a spatial preposition connecting them, like chair at table, or an object having an action on another object, like man riding an elephant. And for each relationship instance, we know exactly which two bounding boxes are involved in the action. So we know this man is playing this guitar, and that man is playing that guitar. We also have actions made by two humans together, like woman dancing with a man. We also have relationships involving a single object and a property of it. So a table is wooden or this woman is standing and this one is smiling. Overall, lots of statistics, but uh, the most important ones are that we have relationships spanning 288 object categories with 15 different distinct attributes of our actions, like wooden or jumping, 31 distinct prepositions of verbs, like at or playing, for a total of 1,466 different combinations of relationships. Um, in total, we have about 3.3 million instances annotated, of which 367,000 involve two objects and the other involve one object. As an extra, we also have uh, 61 zero-shot triplets that we only annotated on the validation and test sets, such as girl holding dumbbell or pizza on a cutting board, which have zero training samples, but still could be done um, by compositionality. That's interesting exactly for vision and language research. Also, I would like to really stress all the annotation types coexist on the same images. For instance, in this image, we have a number of image level labels, for some of which we made bounding boxes, annotations, visual relationship annotations, and instance segmentations. Then in addition to that, we also have the localized narratives. And in particular, the image level labels and the boxes and the segmentations, they all come from a closed vocabulary that we defined beforehand, whereas the localized narratives now come from our open freeform vocabulary that Notitus just decided to use. And I think it's very interesting to find semantic and visual links across all these annotation types, it opens the door to a lot of fun research. Finally, I also would like to mention works on vision and language um, on open images by other groups, like the NoCaps effort, which annotated lots of captions on the validation and test sets of open images uh, to be used as out of domain data. Or specifically, the training set for no caps consists of Coco, 
and um, open images with bounding boxes and cocoa with bounding boxes and also captions. So because open images is a lot more classes than cocoa, now the captions to be produced on the test set uh, mention many objects for which there were no captions at training time. So that's also an interesting generalization thing. Facebook uh, released a series of data sets and challenges based on scene text, like the word Nescafe on this clock, and they released the notation for the boxes and the transcription of this text in the scene, as well as text VQA challenge, very relevant for this workshop, which has questions pertaining to the scene text, such as what number is the yellow end pointing to? So this is all I had on vision and language. And now I will conclude with an advertising for my other love, 3D deep learning. I also run a team on that at Google. Uh, here are two example works, uh, reconstructing all objects in a scene in 3D, given a single image, as input, and also the special arrangements in 3D, or again, given a single image, synthesize a new view of that object realistically. There are many more works in that line uh, on my homepage. And if you like this kind of works, please check it out. Thank you for your attention.